as a disclaimer before I start, I just want to state that I'm not bashing or showing disrespect to our military or anyone else's military. I'm just stating my opinion on war. So I want you to imagine that you're a soldier in the war, you got your camouflage going on, you got done grenades, and your last one in your unit. And you're kind of surrounded like that, you know. Then you finally step out and you're not blind shooting anymore, and you aim at somebody. Now when you're aiming at that person, you're not really thinking about whether that person has a family, a mother, a father, maybe a dog, something like that, something that that person loves. All you're gonna be thinking about is that you wanna just dispose of that person because he's, he's on the opposing team. And because of that, you're gonna come home and then probably throw a party because you're a veteran, this and that. And you're really just celebrating taking someone else's life just because they had an, a different opinion. You're taking other people's lives to preserve other lives here. It's basically what you're doing. That's why today I'm going to persuade you and change your opinion on why war is unnecessary. Yet it is a reoccurring issue in our society. Now, according to George Santania, he's a philosopher, poet, and novelist. He said that those who cannot remember to put the past, remember the past are doomed to repeat it. And those who cannot remember history are doomed to repeat it. Now I guess he's referring to everyone in general, but he's also referring to our world leaders. And it's, uh, in history, everyone tends to, the history always tends to repeat itself. One thing recurs after another. It started off in the 19, early 1900s, we got World War I, just because it just people between two different countries and everyone got involved. Then we have World War II because of World War I and the, the post-reaction of World War I. And after World War II, we had the Cold War because of what happened in World War II. And it all happened just because world leaders and countries had egos and selfish and they couldn't take consequences of people's actions. Just like how Plato said, all humans are, are inherently selfish. We were born selfish as babies. When a baby is out of the womb, the baby is crying, wanting milk, wanting to be held. They were one years old. They don't really have cognitive thinking yet. They're just kind of, whatever they want, that's what they need. And they just kind of whine and cry about it. Now, secondly, I'd like to talk to you about some facts. And on history, history on the net.com said that over 15 million soldiers died in battle in World War II. And 19 million and, and another 30 million died in the Holocaust and because of the Holocaust and crimes against humanity. And all those people dying were just because other people had opinions and they were wanting to do what they wanted to do because they were selfish. And because of those opinions, they're just, just kind of animalistic, don't you think? That we had to exterminate, that the Germans and Nazis had to exterminate a whole, almost an entire race just because they wanted something. It's kind of animalistic. And um, according, according to listverse.com, America's greatest shame, the number one greatest shame was taking over uh, the United States of America. Um, originally, as you guys all know, was the Native Americans originally lived here. And Columbus did not find America, he f or find America, found America. He, um, he just happened to show up where the other people lived and we exterminated this entire culture, just Indians and people like that, just because we wanted more land or we found something new, with better resources and stuff like that. And uh, according to this verse, the second greatest shame was slavery. And Americans and or I guess people from England at that at that time decided, hey, we're just gonna go around and take pick it up on the boat, take it back, kind of do what we need you to do. And the whole concept is just, just not right. It's shameful that we just had to pick up strangers just because they're less educated, less um, advanced than we were. They didn't have guns and stuff like that. Just because they weren't were at the level that we were at at that point. Now, uh, just so you guys can reference to someone else who, who uh, thought that peace was the answer to war. I'm sure a lot of you guys heard of the Beatles, John Lennon. John Lennon, uh, he was murdered, but 
ironically. And then um, his whole message in the 70s was just peace. You might have heard the song Imagine. You might have heard the song uh, Give Peace a Chance. And on Mordetarian Day, the whole crowd was just singing out the uh, uh, Give Peace a Chance. And just uh, according to Webley.com, John was just like bewildered that a whole half a billion, half million people were just gathered around just promoting peace and ending the war. And that was because it was Vietnam. And Vietnam was an unnecessary war that America got, debatably an unnecessary war that America got themselves into. And although, like I said, people are selfish and people are going to do what they want to do, and there's always going to be conflict because people are going to do what they want to do, and it's our country as a whole is just doing that. Um, peace being the answer is kind of unrealistic, but it's still a view that we should consider. And it's kind of factual because think of our country right now. We're, trying to, we're avoiding war with North Korea. We know it's a bad thing. And if we just kind of put two countries, put their differences aside, everything would be fine. Dorothy, what did you think? I thought overall he had good co eye contact. Um, he was like, I felt like he was talking to us. He wasn't like, like you said, how like we should talk instead of memorizing something. Like I felt that he did a good job doing that. Even though I didn't agree with a lot of maybe his point of view, um, the speech was clear to me. And um, I like the use of his quotes. So overall, I feel like uh, his transitions were pretty smooth as well. All right. Well, um, you, you sound a little defensive at the beginning of the speech, like you didn't want to insult anybody because they were serving in the military or something like that. Uh, I don't think that anybody thinks war is a good thing, and soldiers hope for no war. That's that's you know, war is the thing that. Uh, they're most likely to uh, suffer from. So uh, the, I don't think that your point is particularly controversial. I know, I, you know, and I don't think you have to convince anybody that war is bad. Now, war is unnecessary, though. That's more specific, and I think you've got a little bit of a problem here because you suggest that there isn't any alternative. I mean, you, 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 at the end of your speech, you're talking about how, you know, peace isn't really a realistic uh, answer to some of these differences. Okay, so what is? If we don't have peace and war is unnecessary, how do we resolve those differences? This is, this speech sounds like an impromptu speech uh, that you thought about, you know, and uh, you've got an interesting point of view, but it's not developed at all. There's no content to it. There's no research on it. Uh, and you've got some of the... most simplified versions of historical events that you can imagine that you're reasoning from. And I think that's a problem. You know, it's, it's, it's a, this is, you, you said, let me find the biggest issue in the world. Hey, war, that's the biggest issue in the world. And now let me try and convince people in five and a half minutes that I'm going, to, you know, that I've got the answer. That's never going to work. I mean, you've got 10,000 years of human history that shows that that doesn't work. So why, why would you choose to go in this direction? I don't know. Now, you could be much more specific about a particular war and make a value judgment that says we shouldn't have been involved in Vietnam, or you could make an argument that says 
uh, here's the best way for us to avoid having a war with North Korea or something like that. And that would give you something a little bit more focused. And then you, you could find some information on it. As it is, it just feels like it's so abstract that there's no real content here. You've got a couple of vague philosophical quotes that you make reference to, which are not necessarily bad things, but they, they're probably more useful as transitions than they are as proof of the argument that you're making. And I think that, I think you know this. I think you know that this is kind of a, you know, you're, you're swinging, you know, swinging for the fences and all you're going to hit is fog. You're not going to make contact with any anything here and and that's that's a problem I think Dorothy picked out the, the the best things about your speech and that's the way you're talking to the audience you you're trying to look at us uh, you're trying to be engaged um, you have you have an idea and uh, you sound sincere in, in your idea but the the content is just severely underdeveloped and um, yeah. when it comes to critical thinking stuff that's the problem on this assignment. All right. Thank you.